If you've been watching and tuning into my YouTube channel for any period of time now, you're probably familiar with the fact that a lot of my work right now in the creative space is heavily based in social media, especially in the sports side of things. But over the last few months, I've really been inspired and driven to take time to craft and create more long form content. There's just something to me about being able to craft and tell a story beyond the confines of a 30 to a 60 second timeline, which we're pretty much restricted to at all times when it comes to making social media content. The other week, I ended up posting a short film about one of my friends and his love for golf, and it's a piece that I'm actually very proud of. We shot it last fall, and you know, due to some things that were out of our hands, we couldn't continue shooting, but I ended up finishing the video anyways, and I'm actually really proud of the final product. So in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly how I created it from how I shot it, the gear I used, but also my mentality while I was out shooting this and the pre-production that I did that you know took place way before me and him actually stepped out on the golf course to shoot the video. If you haven't watched it, I'll leave the link down below for you guys to check out before you watch the rest of this video. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to creating a project like this is the concept of intentionality. I wanted to be intentional with every single shot that I planned and every single shot that I got when we were out on the golf course. Now, this project, for all intents and purposes, was a very spontaneous idea. I literally was watching a few short films on YouTube one day and I decided I wanted to make a short film about a golfer. And my best friend, Brayden, just happens to be a huge golf fanatic. He's no professional, but he loves getting out to the links and really does have a passion for the game. I ended up hitting him up, pitching him the idea and we ended up shooting it on the golf course not long after. Despite the spontaneity of the project though, I made sure to take time to plan some things out, to have concepts and themes and styles ready to go because I wanna get away from running and gunning so much and again, being intentional with what I'm shooting in order to, from start to finish, craft a more well-rounded story. Pre-production is something that I'm still very new to, and that's kind of because coming from a sports background, you don't really have the ability to pre-produce the shots that you want to get at a sporting event. You are at the mercy of whatever happens in the game in front of you. But in this case, I'm shooting a short narrative piece. I want to go in with some idea of the shots I want to get. So what I ended up doing was watching a whole ton of golf content for a day or two, and then taking some screenshots, pulling some frames, and then putting them all in a mood board within Milanote in order to build a kind of a database of shots that I wanted to replicate and create and that mood board ended up becoming essentially a shot list of specific shots and looks that I wanted to get that I could not leave the golf course until I captured them. Now, this is not the prettiest Milano board you will ever see. It's honestly pretty bare bones in comparison to what you'll see other people use this for. But I really do think that the time I took in order to find and gather inspiration, building a mood board, helped me figure out the look and style that I wanted to create this video with. It helped me find inspiration in ways to make golf a beautiful sport. And inherently, golf is very beautiful, but I've never shot it before. So the style of cinematography that I needed to use for this, I wasn't familiar with. So gathering all those pieces of inspiration in one place, looking at them and then building out a shot list helped me come up with this final product. And you can actually see some examples on the Milano here of shots that I directly emulated and recreated in my own video. I also ended up writing down some rules here on the Milano as well, things that I wanted to adhere to while creating this video. Again, I didn't want to run and gun this. I didn't want to wing it. I wanted to be intentional with every single shot I got and setting rules for me, setting the things, the boundaries that I was going to adhere to while creating this piece, then allowed me to just create a much more cohesive style video in the edit. It's not just a bunch of shots piled together. There are certain things that every shot has in common and I think really allowed me to create a much better end product versus if I just went willy nilly and shot without any intentionality whatsoever. There was three main rules that I followed while creating this video. Number one, I wanted to utilize my tripod more and balance out the handheld shots I was doing with some tripod locked off shots as well. Now, I love shooting handheld, but I wanted to switch things up here. I wanted to shoot as much tripod as I was shooting handheld, and that was primarily because of the sport I was shooting. Golf is a very slow moving, patient sport. It's a very precise sport. People are taking their time, lining up their shots. It's a sport where things aren't rushed. It's peaceful. It's not really like crazy all over the place. And I think when you're shooting handheld you tend to give a bit of you know handheld shake and it takes away that peace and calmness while when you put it on a tripod it's locked off you can focus on getting a good composition you can focus on also letting the golfer and the actions and the motion in the frame tell the story versus the camera movement tell the story so one i think it contributed to the style of shooting i wanted to do with you know showcasing golf as a beautiful sport but two it was also a way for me to let certain moments breathe for them for the frame to do the speaking for the 
the the colors and the composition and everything happening there to be part of the story as much as you know me moving the camera would be also part of the story then so locking off in the tripod was the main way i ended up achieving that rule number two i wanted to be intentional about my frame rates and stick to 24 frames as much as i could now i love shooting slow motion as much as the next person i think golf especially in slow motion can look incredibly beautiful and graceful but i wanted this story to have pace to it i wanted there to be some liveliness to it and if i just shot everything in 60 or 120 frames it would just become a slow motion montage and that's not really what i wanted to get at with this story so shooting 24 frames was one of the biggest rules i abided by and i only really switched frame rates when i wanted some extra coverage or when we did our second go around of the course and we were getting shots we already got you know if i already have him putting on his gloves in 24 frames i'm gonna maybe then get it in 60 or maybe then get a wide shot of him driving the golf ball in 120 frames but if you actually look at the final film i don't think i used a single shot that had 60 or 120 frames because i think the 24 frames just looks so good and so crisp the motion blur translates the movements of the golfer so well so that was a big rule that i stuck by and i'm glad i did when i was creating this video finally the last rule i want to talk about was being intentional about utilizing the light that was available to us and as you can tell in the piece we shot this in pretty much natural sunlight the entire time we were just intentional a about the time we shot this at and b how i was positioning my subject in relation to where the sun was now obviously we shot this very early in the morning we got up at around 5 30 got to the golf course for like around 6 15 and the sun just started to come up so we ended up taking advantage more of the warmer golden light that comes from the golden hour of sunrise instead of shooting it later in the afternoon where the sun is right above you and it's a lot harsher to control it's softer it's more pleasing and it also went along with the script and the voiceover that's in the video talking about a golfer who's getting up at early hours to go and chase the game that he loves now in my experience this was the definition of solo filmmaking it was me brayden and the golf course the only other people there were the golfers behind us who were also getting along their morning on the course so we had to be mindful of the fact that we didn't have much time at each hole which means i I didn't have the opportunity to set up a lights or b something to bounce or diffuse the light that was hitting my subject so what i ended up doing was positioning the sun in relation to my subject in order to backlight brayden every time he was at a hole and yes there are some shots that aren't backlit because i obviously need light to hit my subject in certain situations to show his face his reactions him focusing but a lot of my favorite shots of this film are all backlit the sun is either out of the frame or right behind him and the light is wrapping around him and backlighting is a really easy easy way to make a subject in a film like this look really intriguing and for lack of a better word cinematic. At the end of the day, I don't think I get the look and feel that I'm looking for if I didn't, you know, A, shoot at a specific time of day to get a specific, you know, type of light and B, be intentional about where I'm placing my subject in relation to my light because without those two things, this film, I think, looks completely different. And the fact that I followed that rule, I was able to get the look and feel that I really wanted from the inspirational frames that I got from those films that I was watching. And so being intentional about how I was using light, even though I couldn't control it, I was trying to, you know, use light to my advantage to create a more interesting image and i think the film benefited all that much more from that one rule you can also use this whenever you're shooting sporting events specifically outside if you want to get a more interesting image if the sun is in the frame try to position your subject in relation to the light like i did here make sure they're backlit because that's going to produce a more appeasing image yeah at times it may be situational and when you're shooting indoors using light to your advantage it may be a lot harder but that's also when you're in a position where maybe if you sit down and shoot up towards the athletes you might get some lights in the background and that also creates an interesting image there are always a lot of ways to utilize lighting in your environment even if you can't control it so just keep that in mind next time you're out shooting a live sporting event because one thing i do now is whenever i get to a venue i'm looking about looking to see where the lights are positioned and how they're positioned and then i'm trying to think to myself how can i utilize those lights to capture a more interesting image while i'm shooting the game now you might have noticed that there was a few things on that list I showed earlier rules I wanted to follow that I didn't mention. That's because the end product I got was actually very different from the original vision and idea I had for this golf film. Originally, the story of this film was surrounding a golfer who was waking up at early hours to chase the game he loves. He's not a professional, he's not a high level athlete, he just loves and has a burning passion for this game. And part of the script, part of the story I wanted to tell is that obviously not being a professional, he's gonna have way more drastic 
ups and downs in this game. Golf is unforgiving. You can be hot one day and completely cold the next. And so I wanted there to be a conflict element in that in this video, which as you can see in the final product, there isn't at all. Would it have made for a better video? Yes, but there's a few reasons as to why I never ended up making that version of the video. At first, I wanted to do three different shoot dates for this video. Number one was obviously the morning golf session, which you saw, we saw it and it looks great. Number two was an interview date, which we also shot and we used to drive the narrative throughout the rest of the film. And number three was a day of the driving range where my friend, the golfer, is trying to figure out why his game isn't as consistent and is working on his swing in order to be a better golfer. We got two out of the three shoot days done, but because of the winter and because of the time of year we shot this in, we ended up shooting this late October, early November. We had to put this on pause until the weather came back to where we can go to an outdoor range. So we were pretty much waiting until June or July of this coming year and that put the project on hold pretty much indefinitely. Because of that, I've been sitting on this footage for almost six months now, and it was really frustrating because I knew I had some really great frames from the golf shoot. And I knew I had a really good narrative from the interview that we did. And I realized that if I just sat around and waited for that perfect moment in the summer to make the perfect film that I have envisioned in my head, there was running the risk that I might have been too busy by June or July to finish this project because of other work and projects that might come before then. At the end of the day, done is better than perfect. You may have heard that before in the creative industry, but I realized that I could still have a really good end product with everything I had then. I just kind of had to deal with the fact that my perfect vision of this may not come to light, but I could still come out with a really great product and show it to the world and get feedback and grow from this one piece. So a few weeks ago, I spent a full night editing it, making the video you saw today. And honestly, I'm much happier that I ended up doing this than just running the risk of waiting until the summer to see if we continue it anyways. So next time you're working on a project or an edit, take it from me. A lot of the times done is better than perfect. You can add a dozen more shoot days to a project. You can add countless hours of tinkering in the edit. But at the end of the day, the best version of the video is probably the one you have right there. And you're going to learn a lot more by putting it out to the world and learning from your mistakes and learning learning from the feedback you get. So don't be afraid to put that video out there. Even though you may be chasing the perfect version, just remember that a lot of the time in this industry, done is better than perfect. Now, story is a really big thing in this project, and I want to touch on it here because at the end of the day, you can remove the narrative from this, and it's still a visually very beautiful piece, at least in my opinion. I ended up posting a version of this with just the visuals and some sound design, and people really seem to like it. But it changes completely when you add a character with motivations to center the video around. I wanted to give someone that was relatable to, someone who wanted to improve in something they were passionate about, which is something that, whether you play sports or not, can all relate to. I think as a creative, I always wanna keep improving in my passion to create videos and tell stories. So at the end of the day, the story, the underlying message for me was just as important as the visuals that I included in this video. So the narrative and the voice that you're hearing is actually Braden kind of speaking from a script that I developed from the actual conversation me and him had when I originally pitched him the idea. I texted him one day, said I wanted to do a short film around golf and he was really open and animated about it. So then I took the time to ask him, hey man, like just curious for my own, like for the story's sake, why do you love golf so much? And and his answers are kind of what I took, built a script from his exact words, and then developed questions to then ask him to get a more natural sounding answer while still getting the specific sound bites I wanted for the narrative of the piece. Using our initial conversation as a bit of a pre-interview to then develop the script off of really gave me the ability to create a narrative that was one, relatable, and two, sounded very natural. Being intentional and coming up with those targeted questions to get the answers I wanted was the best thing I could have done for the entire narrative of the piece. And I think it helped the story come across a lot more clearly and not as jittery or as stuttery as if it would have if I did a standard interview where I sat down and I just asked him questions the day of. I also mentioned that I didn't use the interview footage in the final film, and there's two reasons for this. Number one, I didn't use the right lens, and that being that I ended up shooting it on my 16 to 35 GM because when we shot the interview, it was in my apartment, we were in a really tight space, but when I looked back at the footage, I didn't like the way it distorted his face at the focal length we were using, and I wanna make sure that if I put my best friend on camera, he looks his best, and the second reason was, I really didn't want to use the interview footage as a crutch and I'm glad that at the end of the day I covered all the interview footage with b-roll because it allowed me to create a more enticing and engaging edit versus if I use the interview footage it would just cut in and out from the golf course to my apartment and I feel like that a could have been really jarring and b I just don't think it did anything for the story in general. Last but certainly not least I'm going to talk about the camera gear that I used to shoot this film and if you've been a fan of my channel and what I've been doing for the last little while not a lot of surprises here but I'm going to go over it anyways. 
For the camera I used, no surprise here, it was all on my Sony a7S III. This has been my go-to camera for the last number of years, and I have said it time and time again that this camera and the FX3, because they're essentially the same camera, are pretty much the best bang for your buck cameras for content creators in any situation. And for me, it's really encouraging to see that this camera not only holds its own in live content capture, which is what I primarily use it for, but it also holds its own as a narrative and documentary style camera. And it's really encouraging for me to see that because I wanna do more long form work after this project and having this camera, being able to be familiar with it and get the images I wanted is really, really encouraging. And it was also really, really great to use this camera in a completely different setting in a different way that I'm normally used to. Now, lens wise, I pretty much stuck to the holy trinity of zoom lenses. I had my 16 to 35 GM Sony lens. I had my 28 to 75 Tamron lens, and then I had my 70 to 200 F4 Sony lens. But looking back on it now, I wish I simplified my lens choice a little more, specifically when it comes to the 16 to 35, which was the one I used the least, but I still switched into because I think I just had the mentality of like, oh, I have this lens here. I might as well take advantage of it. But realistically, whenever I had to switch lenses, that's time I'm wasting. And also there are people behind us when when we were shooting this golfing on their own time and I didn't want to hold up anyone's golf day because I had to switch a lens or switch back to a different lens. So looking back on it now, I'm going to be a little bit more picky moving forward about the lens I'm using and the 16 to 35 in this situation was that lens. So just remember that just because you have gear with you or just because you own a specific piece of gear doesn't mean you need to use it because it just might not be the right one for that scenario. The 28 to 75 was an awesome lens for this shoot because at the end of the day, the 24 to 70 focal length is fantastic, especially if you're in a bit of a running gun situation like we were not in terms of pre-production, but in terms of not having time on our side with people golfing a few holes behind us, I have have primes that I could have used in this situation for you know more depth of field or sharper image but at the end of the day I can cover those focal lengths with this lens anyways so that's a really big reason why it was one of my favorite lenses and the main lens I used to shoot this video. The 70 to 200 was a really fun lens to use for this film, especially for the close-ups you see later. Now, obviously with a 28 to 75, I don't wanna to get too close to him as he's swinging a golf club or else I'm just asking for trouble here. Having the 70 to 200, being able to get close-up shots without being in his grill, huge benefit. Also, I think it just gives a different look from the 20 to 75, having a telephoto lens, having the ability to compress the background, it really gave a different look to a lot of the shots in this film that I really appreciated having that variety in the edit afterwards. In my opinion, I don't really ever see the 70 to 200 focal length being used a lot in the narrative space. So I was really interested to try it out and the results kind of speak for themselves. And so I'm really happy I ended up bringing it out that day and using it as much as I did. I also obviously used the tripod for a lot of the locked off shots that I mentioned earlier. Part of the film was shooting some of it handheld, part of it was shooting on a tripod. And it was by using this k concept tripod that I was able to do so. I know tripods aren't like the sexiest thing in the world, but like I said, there is something to be said about a locked off shot where you can focus on the composition of the image. You can focus on the movement in the image instead of worrying about how the camera is gonna be moving. And I think also in the edit, having the contrast of a locked off shot going into a handheld shot added a breath of fresh air and kept you more engaged. And especially in the edit, I found it was much more interesting to use the locked off shots in conjunction to the handheld versus just having the same handheld look throughout the entire video. Audio wise, I used the Godox VDS M2 on camera microphone in order to capture a lot of the audio you hear in the film, from the rustling of golf clubs being pulled out of the bag to the sound of a golf ball being hit. And I was pleasantly surprised by this microphone. I ended up getting it from Godox not too long before I started shooting this piece. And I wasn't really sure what to expect from it, but I was really impressed by the audio quality and the way it was able to capture things as I was shooting. There are obviously so many other ways to capture audio in this situation, but when you're a running gun filmmaker and you're solo in this situation, situation, there's not much you can do. I actually made a full video talking about how I capture and use audio in my videos for sound design that you guys can watch. I'll leave a link down below. But yeah, really surprised by the way this Godox microphone worked. And as you can tell, the sound design sounds crisp and it really adds to the environment and the world building I wanted to do in this golf film. Lastly, I had this filter in front of my lens while I was shooting the piece. This is Freewall's magnetic V and D system. And this system actually does two things for me while I'm shooting. Number one, it provides me with variable ND, which is essential if you're ever gonna be shooting in an outdoor environment. And number two, I'm also able to get a mist on this. They have an internal ND here, almost dropped that. They have an internal ND here that can be a regular one ND or also one ND plus mist. And if you guys know me, I usually have a very low power mist type filter 
filter on my lens at all time, whether it's a 1 8 Pro Mist or a 10% Cinebloom, but I really do like that the mist can be integrated right into this filter and also it's magnetic, which means anytime I wanna switch from a two to five, I just take this off, pick up the two to five, put it on and we're good to go. There's no screwing and screwing off of filter systems for this, which is a really big reason why I've used this for so long. And in a situation when we're rushed by golfers behind us and we don't wanna take the time and the sun was getting stronger and stronger as the morning went along, I was able just to pop off the two to five, pop on the six to nine and we were good to go. ND is invaluable in these situations. I really recommend if you guys are looking for a good ND system, invest in something that will last you and that has good quality. Freewell is great. Polar Pro is great. I've used several different ones throughout you know, my career, but I highly recommend if you're shooting any kind of sports outside, whether it's a live event or a narrative piece like this, get yourself an ND filter. It will make a huge world of a difference on how your footage looks afterwards. Overall, I learned so much through this process of creating this short golf film. Not only did I get to work with one of my best friends, but I got to challenge myself because as someone who shoots primarily live sporting events and just live events in general, this can be very jarring. And it, at times it was very intimidating, but it was really fun getting the ability to craft a story from start to finish. It was awesome to understand and learn the importance of pre-production and seeing how an idea can really come to life just from a simple mood board and a few specific shots that I need to get. I really learned so much about the filmmaking process in this situation, and I'm really excited to apply that now to the sports content that I create at live events, but also to future projects like this, which I do definitely want to undergo moving forward in my career. With this in mind, if you follow me on social media, you might be aware that I've actually kind of set myself a challenge in order to create more content like this short film. I've actually set myself the personal goal of making 10 short films with 10 different athletes over the next little while. In order to challenge myself as a storyteller, but also to improve as a cinematographer and to apply everything I learned in this situation. I love doing the social media video work, but I also want to grow as a creative. So if you're interested in content like this, please consider subscribing. Please consider following me on social media. Stay tuned. I'm not going to stray away from tips on how to shoot live sports because that's still a lot of what I do, but I'm really excited to take on a new challenge and grow in this space. And I'm also really excited to bring that to you guys and break it down and show you the behind the scenes of how I make these videos and how I've gone grown through this whole process. Apart from subscribing, if you guys haven't already yet, if you guys learned anything in this video, if you guys enjoyed this breakdown, give me a like down below. And if you guys have any questions about how I shot this piece or the process that I went through to create this, feel free to leave me a comment down below and I will reply to you guys as soon as I can. And that does it for me in this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy guys.